All right, so who in this room has a coach? Raise your hand. All right. Now, for how many of you has your coach said this to you or showed something to you like this? All right, some of you need some new coaches. You, have, you haven't heard this? This is what keeps me up at night. This is what I think every scale-up business runs into is that every time you double your business, you, you break 50% of your people and 50% and of your processes. You know, we, we were lucky. We were one of these companies that, that got past that hurdle, that got to million in revenue, which is only the, the, the 6%. Uh, and we thought we had made it, and now we got easier. But we realized, actually, this is where it got hard. And, and we hit this fork in the road. And the fork in the road was, what kind of business do we want to build, and how do we want to build this business? And what I realized, what I didn't want to do was this. I didn't want a business where every time we took a turn or two around the lap, we were switching out people in team and leadership members you know, like they were tires. But I was also frustrated. I was frustrated because I couldn't understand why as we scaled, some of the people that got us there weren't working and some people were working and other people were working better than they were and, and I just struggled to understand why. So I did some of my best shower thinking uh, and one day I, I got out of the shower and, and I drew a graph and it looked like this and explained most of the frustration that, that we had had. So this is uh, role responsibilities versus time in your business. And think of the dotted line as a 30% growth. So this is what your company needs. If we take a function like marketing, we need a manager, then we need a director, we need a VP. So someone who comes in and has what we need but has no ability to get better quickly becomes an underperformer. Someone who comes in and sort of rises above what we need and grows their capacity, well, they're a unicorn. And you might only get one or two of them, so if you get one, give them money, give them stock, whatever you can do to, to keep them. The A player just can meet up for the needs. Like by the time you're, you're ready for a manager, they're ready for a promotion. I, I don't think A player is an ob objective thing. I think it, it, it's based on the, on the situation. And then everything else is hard choices. So these are people who are getting 10 to 20% better a year, but what we need is 30 or 40% better. That's the uncompromising thing that our business needs. And this is where I realized we had a, a difficult choice. You know, we could either figure out how to get people up to the line or they'd have to step aside, and stepping aside was, was really hard for a lot of them. So this is what it looks like, right? You have needs that grow, and you have people that can give you X. So your choice is to either change the balloon or figure out a way to grow people into what you need so that they can grow with your business. How many people here have some balloons in their company that need some air? Anyone? More people than heard the 50% before, apparently. So this led us to something that we called capacity building, which we went all in on about eight years ago as a leadership strategy. So to me, capacity building is about working on making the employee better holistically. We work on things like time management, productivity, we talk about health, we talk about difficult conversations. We didn't want people to be better robots for our organization, we wanted to increase their capacity overall. And the best part about this is that we would get the business benefit of it and we'd get better employees that could grow with us and they went home and they were better wives and daughters and sisters and parents and, and, and better to, them, to themselves. Now, I know you're probably asking the question, well, sounds great, does this work? And our experience is that it does. So eight years since we made this decision, we've grown our business from seven people uh, and almost a thousand percent, but what I'm much more proud of is the right side where we've really been acknowledged by a whole bunch of organizations with one of the best small businesses to work for in America. And 80% of our senior and extended leadership team today has been promoted and been developed from within the organization. So this led me really to break this down because I didn't realize it was what we were doing into what came to be this four elements of capacity building, which I think is a playbook for how to improve your own leadership ability and, and, and everyone on your team. And they are spiritual, intellectual, uh, physical, and emotional capacity, and I think they are the fundamental tenets of all self-improvement. So spiritual capacity is really about what you want most, your core values, you know, what you want to live by. It's really hard to be an authentic leader if you don't know what you value and who you, who you are. Uh, you know, recently I actually sat down and had a discussion with someone who's been ranked one of the top CEOs in the world, and he said to me, People at our organization who make decisions under our core values are safe. And I think the same thing applies to individuals, that we'll be safe if we can understand our core values and make decisions under them. So it's, it's not religious in any way, it's, just, it's really about what you want and who you are authentically. 
I, I had an opportunity to go to a pretty intensive leadership program five to six years ago and come out of that after six to 12 months with very clear core values that I could use to make decisions, I could share with my family, I could share with people at the company, and you can draw straight lines to a lot of my personal core values, to a lot of the policies um, in our company and the things that we try to do, and it just makes my decision making really easy. And, I, and we got so much value out of this that I decided that we'd do it with our team. So recently I took a bunch of our up and coming leaders, uh, we did an offsite workshop and we focused on their personal why and their personal core values and got pretty deep into this stuff. And the feedback was pretty incredible as they figured this stuff out, went back to their teams, were able to explain to their teams what was important to them, why they did what they did, and when we evaluated their performance months later, it improved on almost every facet with their team. I'll also share one story of someone on our team who actually identified that a core value came out of kind of a situation early in her life where, where uh, one of her parents really embarrassed her by consistently demonstrating a certain type of behavior. And she was actually able to realize that when teammates or people on her team were showing that behavior, she reacted really poorly and just didn't understand why and was able to really put something around this. So helping people understand what's important to them so that they can lead better. Intellectual capacity. This is you know, how you think, plan, learn. This is where the rubber hits the road on what do you want to how do you get it. I call it your personal operating system because you can make it better, you can improvement. You are all here today because you're interested in improving your intellectual capacity and realize that you can get better at doing things by having, by having more information. With Cam Harold's inspiration a few years ago, we drew up this vivid vision. This was our, our, our sort of where we wanted to go. We talked about being the largest global player in our industry, being in five countries, writing a book, winning five prestigious uh, awards for, for company culture, things that seemed, and tripling the business in three years, things that seemed absolutely ridiculous at the time, and some of the team members did it. So that, that was the vision, but intellectual capacity was working with our coaches and Rich and Wayne to reverse engineer like, what we wanted to get to into 12 quarters of goals. What were the skills we had? What were the skills we had to learn? Who were the people that we needed on the team? And build an actual plan on how we were gonna get there and get more focus and more discipline and go in that direction. And in two weeks, we'll have our annual all company summit and we will celebrate having hit every single one of those goals um, on the three-year plan, which is still amazing and, and fascinating to me. Thank you. So physical capacity. How many of you have people on your team that have let themselves kind of go to hell, you know, physically? They're tired, they're exhausted, they're out of shape, and they're coming in as a high performer with a lot of energy, you know, really ready to go. We, we are one person inside and outside work. We show up, you know, the same way. And, and I, your physical capacity acts as a huge accelerant or a drag on everything that you're trying to do. With some inspiration from John Ratliff, a few years ago, we, we adopted a dream program. We asked our employees, what are the five things that you wanna do most in your lifetime? Nothing to do with business. You know, and, and we got some great answers. I wanna skydive, I, I wanna fly a plane, and we got that person lessons. But a bunch of these were around physical goals, and we know that physical goals affect confidence and emotion and all these things. You know, we had someone on our team who said, my goal is to finish a half Ironman. So we hired her a coach. And nine months later, she finished an Ironman with, with Coach Mark and was in the best shape of her life. So your employees have things that are important to them outside of work, personally, professionally, things they wanna do. I would strongly encourage you to see that these are assets to your business, not liability. And that the more that they're accomplishing and achieving in all aspects of their life, the more they're gonna show up in the workplace. Emotional capacity. This is the hard one for a lot of people because this is the stuff that we don't control. This is the stuff that's not within inside of us. This is how we react to other people, changing situations, uh, you know, thing, things that were unexpected, and the quality of our relationship. It makes a huge difference in terms of the energy that we gain or the energy that's dragged uh, on, a, on, a, on, a, on a daily basis. And so last year, we decided to try to create some more depth amongst our team. And we created at our all company event, which we call AP Summit. We fly in everyone from all around the world for four days. So we created something called uh, AP TED Talks, like this. And people got up and spoke about something personal, something that they hadn't maybe shared before, or something that people wouldn't know about them. And it created incredible depth and conversations um, between employees that didn't know things about each other. So we decided to double down on that for this year. And what we did was we hired a gentleman named Philip McKernan, who's a world-class coach and has this initiative called One Last Talk. And One Last Talk is, 
if you, if you are in your last few minutes in the world, what's the talk that you really had to give that you've never given before? And, and he's gonna come in, he's gonna coach these four people to give talks in the entire company on something that they have never shared before in their life that is the most important thing to them. And I've seen the topics and, and they're incredibly personal and they're incredibly deep. And what we hope is we can, again, really create better relationships and understanding among our employees so that they can understand each other and what makes them tick and do, and do better work together. And I'm really excited to, to, to see those and I think it's gonna be incredibly powerful. And this gets to my own personal story of capacity building. So a few years ago, I, I, I was started improving my morning routine. I wanted to get a little bit better. I decided I'd write a note to all my team members. And that note was something inspirational and motivational every Friday. Uh, it looked something like this initially. I started sending it to people. I didn't think anyone was paying attention or reading it. And then I started getting replies that, hey, I really like this. This helped me. I did this. I forwarded this to my dad. My brother now reads this. And I said, huh, maybe I should uh, share this with some people. So I, I shared it with a couple other CEOs. They started forwarding it. People asked me to add people to the list. And uh, eventually I, I couldn't manage the BCC, so I set up a plain vanilla newsletter template and, and a directory where people could find the old one. And then suddenly I'm looking on my email thing and people are opening this in 40 or 50 countries all around the world. And they're sending me notes telling me that, you know, thanking me for doing this, that this has had a huge impact on their personal life, uh, on their business, they share them every week. Uh, and, and I really, it upped my game in terms of what I had to do now because now I had an audience that was expecting uh, quality content uh, every week. And then the press started noticing and they started writing articles about uh, this email and this is the only email that I ever read. And in a really competitive job market, this has been an absolute boon into trying to, to get people to our company. And this little email that I started internally to try to lift people up, now reaches 100,000 people each week in almost 60 countries and it's called Friday Forward. So it sort of led me to the question of uh, why was I spending all this time on this email? Why did this email have a lot of impact on, on, on other people both within the company and, and even people that I had not met before? And, and, and I was thinking about this as I was like starting my book and then, and then one day I saw this presentation and this slide just hit me like 10,000 pounds in the chest and it said, be who you needed when you were younger. And what I realized this whole Friday Forward experiment and what had come out of it was really uh, very personal. And like many of you in the room, you know, I was the 12 or 13 year old kid who was very entrepreneurial in class who was told if we could just, if we could just sit down and stop talking and stop being interested in new products and be a little less creative, like we think he'd be really productive. And, it, and as a result of that, you know, things that were strengths were painted as weaknesses and, and I really underperformed for a large uh, portion of my life. And, and, and so this, this was really what I needed and I needed someone to show me how to build my capacity and how I could better live to my potential. So I have an ask for everyone in this, in this room and it's a pretty simple one. You know, think about what you needed. Like, please build the company and the team that you would have been psyched to work on when you were just coming out of college and that starry-eyed 22-year-old college kid, for those that, that went to college, build a company where you'd be proud for your kids and your grandkids to go work. But most importantly, build a company or organization that builds people. If you'd like to learn more about capacity building, um, my new book, Elevate, is out on this last week. I'll be in the back corner just giving them away, not charging everything. Um, happy to answer you know, any questions. My information's on here, very easy to find. Thank you all very much for your time today. Bob Glazier. Uh, thank you.